Things have set up overnight, and I have a little problem, but I have a lot of success. <laughs> My battery tray just didn't glue down. Well, it glued down. You can see right now the quite a bit of it from about right here back is just glued down. There's a big gorilla back there holding it down. I tried to pull it out to redo it and won't come out. But the front just really isn't fixed. So I'm going to put some epoxy here in the front. I think is how I'm going to solve this. Just put epoxy under this area and try to get this area as well glued down because the success part is is yes the straps the velcro straps do slide in this front area so i don't know what to say the back back in here is so well glued down that i can't get it out but two-thirds of it isn't glued down so if i just do something about the front here i think this is going to be really good uh, we'll see how that works out. The uh, magnets here and the epoxy here worked well. Got a little bit of a problem. This edge is even. This edge is just a little over. The magnets epoxied well in the top. And now the top does go in. And... Uh, snaps down well and as well um, the magnets really do a good job of keeping it together now I do have one little cosmetic problem that I would sticks out right there but I'm sure a little sanding that really isn't in it is just a touch but that's just out more over there uh, not a big deal but I can sand a little bit right there and just make that a little bit more cosmetic. Uh, I can take the blue tape off now, if I can get a hold of it. And my fuselage that I popped open, put the battery tray in, did glue back up. Oops, didn't mean to turn that light off. There we go, get that off. Uh, so this did glue back. I've got some ridges in here and stuff. I've got to clean that up a little bit. But all of that did really well, except for the battery tray. Uh, so we got some fixes to do today. <laughs> but other than that, it's all doing really well in my humble opinion. Hmm, and I'm realizing there's not that much more to do here. Fix my tray, and I think just look, epoxying it down real good in the front is going to be best. So those straps do slide. Epoxy these in. And fix the tray. That's it. Ooh, probably should have finished this yesterday. I had my mind on doing the... ESC video. So let me see if I can epoxy those two things and we'll see where we're at at that point. And I did fill the threads up in these nuts on these plates before I put epoxy on top of the plate because I can get it out of here much more easily because it won't be trapped between two sur surfaces in this case. Those parts have been epoxied. And I mean, I slathered the epoxy onto the front of that battery tray right there. <laughs> I worried less about weight and more about strength. Once that cures completely, that won't come up either. And my Velcro straps still slide. I epoxied in the brackets, whatever you call them, to hold down the wing the four bolt holes have been two of them have been cleared the other two still have uh vaseline in them to keep the epoxy out of them maybe a little epoxy up over them but that chips out pretty good epoxy hard enough to really get rid of uh i also dremeled 
the edge of this pretty good and so basically the uh, build of the sky hunter as far as what comes in the box uh, is done if I were if it were 20 years ago and uh, there was no such thing as a flight controller I'd be putting an RC receiver in this and a little RC receiver battery and that's it that's all we used to fly with I didn't fly I've always been interested in the sport. Never felt I could afford it or do it well until autopilots came along. Uh, so let me stick this uh, camera on a tripod real quick and we'll look at the overall build at this point. So we'll just basically go through the parts that came with the aircraft. The wings. The carbon fiber rods have all been put where they're supposed to be. I'd like to say this channel is still not glued in because I'm going to have wire routing through there. And while I am doing that, electronics in this wing and the wire routing, I don't want the servos in to be in the way or cut loose the ailerons yet to be tender to work with or anything like that while I'm figuring out and installing the electronics into the wing. And of course, let's see, where is it? Well, there it is, <laughs> hiding. And this big carbon fiber rod, like I say, goes through the two wings. Here's the other identical one. That's it. And they mount up here like I say except for the servos and the electronics that will be mounted in them they are completely done these are the two booms that go from the tail section to the wing there's nothing to be done with them didn't want to step in front of the camera this is the rear section complete with linkage servo carbon fiber rods extra carbon fiber parts for stability it's been tested it is 100 percent working that's the end of that so you can see the fuselage i'm going to move up on the bench here a little bit closer uh, you can see the fuselage you've been looking at that most of today the other parts that are left is the equipment tray which it can be slid in and out so I'm not going to do anything with this at this point till I figure out how and where I'm going to utilize it and what I'm going to mount on it and where I know I'm going to use a F765 wing in this this is the nose section. There's actually two pieces here. There's this part, which is kind of traditional since the Bixler days with the magnets to hold it in. Then there's this in case you want to have it a little more aerodynamic. I'm not sure at this point which parts I'm going to use. Uh, I don't know if I'll use it like that. And, glue this together and then cut a hole in here for mountain servo for pan and tilt or if I'm just going to put a hole in here and mount a, just a camera in it looking straight forward if I'm going to utilize it like this I haven't made that decision but I did get this much completely ready to go and that those magnets hold it really well and like I say I Fix my little cosmetic problem there. Uh, of course, the motor didn't actually come with the kit, but it's a fairly important item. And there's the ESC on the motor. I'll put that back on 
But right now, with other things going on, I don't want it in the way either. Kind of like the parts on the wings. But that's four bolts. Comes on and off easily. Uh, there, These are the four bolts that screw the wing on that came with the kit. Other than that, stuff that came with the kit is the five foot servo cable to go back through the boom to the rear stabilizer. I have two servos here for the wings. Uh, and then the rest of this in this little thing I use to hold parts is just the basics of my pan and tilt. There's the servo horns, control horns, whatever you want to call them, for the uh, ailerons and a Y connector in there for the ailerons. That's it. A few little. This Velcro came with the kit. Oops. This Velcro came with the kit, but I used my own. So that's what's left from the kit the control arms and stuff. Also, the linkages in that container I'm not going to use. Now, to finish up, I'm going to move this aside. And I'm probably going to have to change my camera a little bit. But this was my parts box I've had around here for, I think, almost a year. The, while I was figuring out what parts I was going to put on this creature and how I would do it. So what is left in this box is just the box for the sunny sky motor that's over there in the thing for the plane. This is the instructions that come with the airplane. I do have a 915 megahertz telemetry, one watt telemetry radio in there. One of those expensive ones, but then I switched to Crossfire. Uh, and had to go with the 433. I can't find these in 433. Uh, I'm still looking for another good telemetry solution. Telemetry's been bad lately. Uh, at first, I was just going to run a 12.8 plastic problem. Because uh, I couldn't find the aeronauts. And over the year it's taken with this, I did find the aeronaut props. And I have two spare this is four props or two spare sets just to have. Uh, that's all that's left in this box except for the MRO autopilot that I thought I would be using a year ago. And I didn't even know I'd be working with Maytech at that time. Telemetry radio, 915 again. Airspeed sensor. Uh... GPS compass module, what is this? That's the actual autopilot, yeah, that's the actual autopilot in that box. Uh, various and sundry cables, they come with their own little power distribution. Uh, battery monitor board that's pretty, pretty good, I like it. Um, they do not have a built-in OSD. And during COVID, when I started playing with the F-765 and H-743 wing, the built-in OSD, well, if you've been following my channel, you saw that I did try to get an OSD working on this. I burnt one up with a soldering iron. The other ones were so small I couldn't solder to them. Anyway, as you can see and probably well know, this complete autopilot system, I didn't use. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I just like that OSD built in. It just gives you so much information. Uh, so technically, I'm going to set this aside along with that telemetry radio. And the only thing left here is the piece of paper for the Sky Hunter that comes with it. This gives you an illustrated parts breakdown or exploded parts view it says one little sentence down here about putting the carbon fiber square rod inside the elevator itself how to do that 
On the other side, they tell you that the CG should be one third of the wing from the leading edge. Well, that's not in millimeters, inches, or anything. In my humble opinion, everything I've seen about airplanes, pretty much the center of gravity is the spar. Uh, this seems to be close to that. Mm, it looks like it's on the back side of the spar, perhaps, but it's someplace in there. Uh, and I'm sure on the internet I can find a numeric value. So there's the full scale Sky Hunter and the total instructions that come with it. And that's about it. Uh, so everything that came in the Sky Hunter kit is assembled. Well, no, the control horns that came in the kit have not been uh, placed on the uh, wings yet. Everything else that came with the kit's been mounted. Um, servos don't come with the kit, so they don't count. <laughs> so basically, the physical build is finished. I've decided that electronics are going to go in the wings of this one. Uh, I'm to the point of doing the electronics, so things are going to slow down here. That will give me time to do my ESC video. I'll be able to start tuning the mini Talon. I also have the flame wheel hexacopter to fly. Um, uh, I do, <laughs> I'm going to laugh at this one. I've got a whole other Sky Hunter in the box, exactly like this one. Uh, there was a confusing, confusement in shipment, <laughs> not on my part. Uh, and I ended up ordering a second one from a different company because I did not know if the Sky Hunter... The original one I ordered was two or three months late, past the point that it was supposed to be delivered. I think I ordered the second one when the first one didn't arrive on its arrival date and just was going to deal with getting that money back and stuff. And uh, the first one ended up arriving like four days after I ordered the second one. And I don't think it cost me but 120 bucks, something like that, for the Sky Hunter. Both of them were like 120 bucks a piece. So I just figured I'd be breaking parts and needed to keep it. <laughs> That's why I haven't been this specific with this build as I was on the Mini Talon. Because I don't have spare airplane parts for the Mini Talon. I do have spare electronics, but not the wings, details, whatever. So, well, this is quite the event. <laughs> I'm standing here figuring what's next. As always, thanks for watching, guys. ESC video next. And thank you.